It was not the first time Jerusalem had been flooded with people shouting Hosanna. That was Passover. It happened every year, with branches representing victory. Pilgrims would stream into the gates, prepared to recite together Psalm 113 through 118, including the joyful greeting, Hosanna, Lord save us, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But this was different. The rabbi on the donkey was a sensation, a worker of true miracles, and a teacher unlike any other. It was said he had raised a dead man back to life. Surely he had the power of God. Those fortunate enough to see him entering the city shouted out their greetings and made the way more beautiful by laying down their cloaks and branches as they would do for the most honored of men. That was Passover. That was the celebration of the blood of the lambs. God kept his word, and the angel passed over their sons in Egypt. How many hoped this man would be that angel of death for the Romans? How few understood that he was, instead, the lamb. The lamb whose blood would save them from sin and death. Had they known, would they have gone silent? Or would they have joined us today, shouting more loudly still, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Happy Palm Sunday, church. I want to invite you to stand and to sing Hosanna together.
sing this one more time. We sing Jesus risen and exalted one. Jesus. Jesus. You're the risen man. Risen man. Exalted one. Good morning. What a wonderful way to start the day, to worship together with all of you. Hello, church family. I'm so glad to see so many of you here. For those of you who are at home, online, good morning to you. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us today. A couple quick reminders. Thank you for everyone who is wearing a mask. We just want to continue that practice. We would love for your masks to cover your nose down to your mouth. That is helpful for all of us. Thank you. Um, if those of you who get here a little early, could you just squeeze to the center of your pews, and then those who are coming in a little bit later, they can come in on the edges. But you all look good right now. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, or you feel like the sanctuary is just too full for you, we do have an overflow downstairs in room 105-106. The um, service is being live streamed down there. You are welcome to come on down. We have a sad announcement to make. Um, Pastor Bruce Chapman, a former pastor here at First Free, has passed away this past week. Um, many of you probably know him, but his obituary, there's a copy out on the um, information desk if you are interested in that. I am excited to say that Easter is coming. Praise the Lord. We are going to celebrate Easter together. Friday this week, we have a service here in person at 7 p.m. That will be live streamed as well celebrating Good Friday. Easter Sunday, we have two services, 9 a.m. and 10.30. Those in person, our 9 o'clock service will be live streamed. You can watch it then or a little bit afterward. We are asking for you to register if you are going to come in person. You can register online at our church website or you can call the church office. Just make sure you get a space if you want to be here in person next week. All right, I am going to be reading... Today's scripture verses for our Lenten reading. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 118, 1 and 2, and then verses 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our New Testament reading is from Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! 
Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. In a normal year, we would now have our children come in and wave their palm branches and say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But I'm excited we still have children. They're just going to be on the screen saying, Hosanna, continue in worshiping as we worship together with these kids from Creekside. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Have you ever just <laughs> had enough? I mean, you know the feeling, right? Deep, uh, empty feeling deep inside of you. You know, you know you've done everything right. I mean, you followed the book, but still, there's this, there's this uh, unrelenting uh, hollow space uh, deep in, inside your soul. I can imagine a crowd this size that uh, some of you have stood in that same place that I once stood. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you my story, a story of uh, unlikely, um, unbelievable uh, um, experience encountering the one and only Christ. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, uh, I guess I, I suppose I, I should be used to it by now. I mean, after telling my story uh, so many different places, so many different times. Um, yet I, I still feel embarrassed by, a little bit by all the attention. I mean, I know it was a remarkable thing that happened to me. A, a privilege, really. Um, but I still um, uh, feel ashamed. I mean, I, I can take no credit. <laughs> I mean, I, in fact, truth be told, I, I resented it. I, I resisted it at first. I didn't want anything to do with it. I just thought I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> now I know different. I, I know now that it was God that put me on that road <laughs> at that specific time. I mean, if it hadn't been for that... Uh, seemingly random encounter. I would never have carried the cross of Christ. Uh, my story, I, I, I got to believe, is all like, uh, like yours. Uh, my name is Simon. Um, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, by birth, I, I'm, I'm a Jew, I, born in Judea. Early on, though, my family, we, we moved to uh, Cyrene in, in northern Africa. There I was raised in the Jewish community. And my family, I'm guessing a lot like yours, is a religiously devout family. Um, every Sabbath we would be at the synagogue. At the age of 12, my father started teaching me the Torah. Um, you know, we, we followed and practiced the, the holy days. Uh, and I, I got to believe that... Uh, like a lot of boys my age, I, 
Um, you know, I, I dreamed of one day being able to celebrate Passover in Jerusalem. I, I grew up, met a, a beautiful young woman. We got married. I had two sons, uh, Rufus and Alexander. I made a, a, a good living and provided for my family. It was well thought of in my community. Um, but it was about... The, my middle age years, that I became increasingly dissatisfied with my life, particularly my religion. My, my beliefs and, and practices, sure, they, they uh, provided for me uh, uh, an anchor, you know, to my life. Uh, they provided a, a social group, uh, a structure to my life. But yet, they, they didn't seem to satisfy my, my deep longing um, for, for joy, for peace, uh, for the nearness of God. <laughs> I, I continue to uh, follow the law and the customs of my people. But increasingly, they held less and less meaning for me. Take, for example, Passover. Passover. <laughs> Passover, it's the celebration of the greatest event in my people's history, um, our, our deliverance from, from Egypt. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know the story, right? How Pharaoh continued to harden his heart time after time after, after time, wouldn't allow Hebrew people to, to go free. And so God sent the angel of death uh, uh, to uh, take the life of the firstborn male of every household. Uh, but he made a provision uh, for us Israelites. He, he told us to slaughter a lamb and then take the blood of that lamb and put it on the door frames of our houses, uh, on the uh, outside of the door frames, along the side, and also on top. And, and, and then as that angel of death would pass through the land, he would pass over those households with blood on their door frames. After that, Pharaoh relented, let my people go free. Since then, we have been celebrating Passover for thousands of years with, uh, uh, with feasts and, 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 and ceremonies. Every Jewish household would sacrifice a lamb. Hmm. But <laughs> my soul increasingly was, was dissatisfied with that tradition. Have you ever discovered that with, with, with your traditions? It was about five years ago or so. I, uh, my business took me up to Jerusalem. <laughs> I happened to be there over the Passover feast. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I was excited. I was truly excited to, to be there. I figured that I was going to make this more than just a, a business trip. I would be in the holy city at the holiest time of the year. I, I figured that if I didn't discover uh, what I was missing in my religion, <laughs> I thought then I might just give it all up. I don't have family in Jerusalem. But, uh, when I got there, there were some uh, Cyrenian friends that uh, were there for the feast. I mean, it was a thrill. It really was. Uh, to uh, go to the temple with thousands of pilgrims and to worship there and to, to watch our sacrifices being offered and the smoke rising to the heavens. <laughs> ah, the words of the priests, they were familiar, comforting. I mean, it was a beautiful ceremony. I mean, it, it really was. <laughs> But I got to be honest with you, it, it did nothing for me. Here I was in the temple at the holiest time of the year, and yet I felt no closer to God. You see, that was my problem. <laughs> I wanted more than just religion, I, I, I wanted God. I mean, I wanted to know God. I mean, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, I mean, they knew God. 
<laughs> Moses, I mean, he, he, he talked to God out there in the desert in that burning bush. David, <laughs> I mean, think about David. David walked with God through those green pastures, e- even through the valley of the shadow of death. I, that's what I wanted. I wanted God. I wanted to, to, to know God. I, I wanted to be able to walk with God. I wanted to be able to talk with God. And, and if I couldn't find him there in Jerusalem on Passover, then when? I mean, where? As it was, my business took me out of the city for a couple of days. I had made arrangements to make sure I was back in time for the end of the feast. Uh, Negotiations. (laughs) It took longer than usual. I mean, they always do, right? And so I found myself scrambling back to the city just on the eve of that Sabbath. I came over a hill just outside of Jerusalem. And I saw something on the side of the road that just kind of, I mean, it sent shivers down my spine. (laughs) There on the side of the road were some Roman soldiers. They were digging holes, laying out timber, rope, piles of spikes. (laughs) It was a hill that the locals called Golgotha place of the skull and I knew they were preparing it for a crucifixion (laughs) I can tell you I didn't want anything to do with any crucifixion not on that day and so I picked up my pace and I just rounded a corner as I rounded that corner I ran into a a small group band of Roman soldiers followed by a small group of wailing mourners and I realized these were the criminals going to their own crucifixion. On that day, there were three of them. I got to the side of the road as as far as I could be away from them, just to try to slip on by. And as I was coming up to the first two, I recognized that they were thieves, evidently. I mean, they were cursing their crosses, and they were... Uh, The soldiers were prodding them on. I didn't know who I despised more, (laughs) you know. I didn't, uh, the the criminals or or the the soldiers. The third man was falling further, further behind. Now, you understand what happens at a crucifixion, right? I mean, the the, the, uh, condemned criminal has to carry their own cross beam, (laughs) Uh, they have to carry their own crossbeam on which they are going to be crucified. As I came up to this third individual, I I saw that sign that that Roman soldier was carrying. It said, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. (laughs) Jesus. I, I had heard that name before. I had heard that name when I was in, in Jerusalem. I remember some said that this Jesus was a rabbi, but not just an ordinary rabbi. No, he was a rabbi that did signs and wonders. Others claimed that he was a prophet. I mean, he was quite popular with the common people, but the religious establishment, they didn't like him much. Was this that Jesus? And, and why would the Romans want to crucify a rabbi? Just then, this Jesus, he, he collapsed under the weight of that cross he'd been carrying. And the soldiers started kicking him and cursing at him. Um, but I could tell he had no strength to go on. I was almost by, just to, almost by him, and all of a sudden I felt the weight of a Roman soldier's sword on my shoulder. I, I got to tell you, that is a moment that every Jew dreads. I mean, you remember, we live in occupied country, right? <laughs> so any Roman soldier can force any Jewish person into their service. Um, I mean, if, if they were tired of carrying their coats, uh, they could uh, tell you to carry their coat. And, and, and you had to. For one mile. I mean, that was the law. Can I tell you, on that day, 
I wanted nothing to do with carrying any Roman soldier's coat. <laughs> so I tried to ignore that sword on my shoulder, but <laughs> he, he pressed even harder, in fact, knocked me to the ground. I, I thought, what does he want with me? What, what did I do wrong? And all of a sudden, I heard him say, you carry his cross. Oh, I couldn't believe it. The last thing I wanted was to carry this man's cross. The last thing I wanted was to have anything to do with this man or the cross or this whole scene. I mean, I was simply a, a businessman on my way to a holiday. Those Roman soldiers, they were in no mood for any excuses. So I went over, picked up that cross piece, put it on my shoulders, turn, headed towards Golgotha. A few steps in, I glanced sideways at that condemned criminal. Uh, I could tell that um, he had certainly uh, <laughs> been beaten. I, I mean, his, his robe was bloodied uh, um, was on his back. Uh, his face was bruised, and it was, it was puffy. And, and, and his skull, there was blood from some, some injuries, uh, some damages, some puncture wounds on his, on his skull. As I struggled under the weight of that, of that cross piece, <laughs> I wonder, how in the world did he have the strength to even carry it this far? We said nothing. But our eyes did meet. I figured that in his eyes, I would see anger. I would see, you know, defiance. <laughs> Instead, he had the look of Gratitude. There's also this, this look of uh, certitude, as though he was uh, <laughs> expecting me. And although I have to imagine he was in an extraordinary amount of pain, uh, uh, there was also this look of courage, as though he was determined that he was going to go through with this. Uh, we continued on. Um, and I thought, who was this man? And why, what had he done to, to, um, uh, to get crucified by the Romans? So we walked along. We fell into this strange rhythm, him and I, as, as though we were in this together. And we got to Golgotha. The soldiers were already at work on the other two men's crosses. Um, uh, the timber was laid out. Uh, the men had been thrown on their backs. Uh, their arms uh, outstretched. Their hands were being uh, in, nailed to that cross. And with every blow of the hammer, they, they screamed and cursed. Their executioners <laughs> didn't even really react. Uh, they pointed me to the center spot, uh, told me to drop the cross, and I was free to go. But can I tell you, I wasn't quite ready to leave this Jesus. Um, after carrying his cross, after walking with him and exchanging glances back and forth, I, I felt like I knew him, and it was almost like he knew me. <laughs> In a moment, they, they had him up on that cross piece, nailed to it. I, I got to be honest, I, I don't ever remember hearing him scream out in pain or, or curse. They lifted him up, and then, and then the worst moment came. They took that cross upon which he was hanging, this Jesus, and they, and they dropped it in, in that hole, in the place. And as they did, uh, I could just hear the flesh tear and the, the shoulders uh, pop out of their sockets and the air just kind of rush out of, his, out of his lungs. And from then on, he, he, was, he was gasping for every breath. Blood uh, poured out of his hands and feet and his face it drained of its color. 
A crowd had begun to gather by that point in time. I, I wondered what kind of sick person would come to watch this event. But then I realized they weren't there to watch. No, they were there to mock. And they weren't mocking the other two criminals on either side. No, they, they were just mocking this, this, this Jesus. I mean, they were laughing at him, and they were calling down curses upon him. And I wonder, what had he done to deserve this? I mean, he wasn't like the other two criminals. I mean, they were foul-mouthed and, and nasty as their tormentors. But Jesus, this Jesus was, was calm. <laughs> He, he was controlled. Huh. And then when he did speak, he said things that um, nobody expected to hear him say. I mean, he said things like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I thought, forgive them? Uh, forgive who? Forgive those Roman soldiers that were nailing him to the cross. Forgive those people that were mocking him and laughing at him. For, forgive us who are just standing by watching all this happen. And, and then I thought, who was he to be able to uh, call God his father? The crowd eventually left. That hill became quiet, except for the, the gasping for breath by the dying prisoners uh, and the bickering of the soldiers <laughs> as they gambled for the men's possessions. And then the strangest thing happened. I mean, it was midday, and then all of a sudden, it went dark. I, I mean, the, the sky went went black. And then I heard Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I thought, I thought something, something had happened there between the two of them. Something deep, something powerful. <laughs> All afternoon, I'd been staring at that sign above his head. It said, this is Jesus. Jesus. You know what that name means, right? <laughs> it means Savior. I thought, what kind of Savior is this? I mean, who is he saving hanging there on that cross? <laughs> and then the second part of that sign said... King of the Jews. I thought, well, I'm a Jew. <laughs> Is he supposed to be my king? And Jesus said nothing for quite a while. And finally, I heard him say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he stopped breathing and he died. I stood there for a moment longer before I turned around and started heading back towards Jerusalem. But before I got over that last hill, I turned back and I looked at, those, at, the, at that cross. And what I saw, I mean, it took my breath away. I mean, Jesus' body was, was no longer on the cross. Now it was just the blood stains that remained. And on the outsides of that cross, cross piece, where his hands had, had laid, where his hands had been nailed, there, there was blood. And on the upright piece, where his head had rested, uh, there was also blood. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, uh, on the outside and then also on the, the top, there was blood. Just like the, the blood on, on those door frames and my ancestors had put there on that very first Passover. I realized something powerful had happened on that hill. 
that we had been passed over. Oh, oh, death had come. God's judgment had, had, had come, but it, it had fallen only on Jesus. And I, I mean, we had been passed over. And friends, I can tell you, that was not some religious ceremony. You know, that, that was real. That was powerful. That was holy ground. At Sabbath, I can, I can honestly tell you, I, I worship like I hadn't worshiped since I was a little boy. I, I mean, I, I sense God. I sense God's presence. I sense that God was real. <laughs> and I realized that this Jesus was my king. <laughs> and I realized that he had died on that cross for me. Friends, can I tell you, I no longer believe in just or random events or chance encounters. <laughs> ah, no, I, God's at work. And he's at work leading us um, to that place and that time where each of us can meet him. That was my time and that was my place on that road to Golgotha <laughs> on the day that Jesus died. Maybe this is your time. Maybe this is your place. Maybe you came here today and as I have shared my story, you, you sense God speaking to you. Maybe you came here today and, and, and you're a religious person like I was and you've been searching for a, a faith that is true. Then can I tell you, look to the cross <laughs> like I did and talk to, to God. Ask him your, your questions. Ask him to, to show that the truth about who Jesus really is. And if you're here today and, and, and you're like me, a follower of Jesus, then thank God that he led you to him. And when you come to that place in your, in your journey in life, you know, where you see something that looks like a, like a cross, something that's heavy, something that's difficult to carry, something that uh, challenges your faith, that tests your strength, then pick it up. Carry it. Because it will lead you to, to holy ground. <laughs> it will lead you nearer to Jesus. Church, this is, uh, as part of Palm Sunday, this is the beginning of what Christians around the world typically call Holy Week. And we look forward as this culmination of Lent. We've been in the season of Lent for five weeks going through the story, leading to the cross. And now we're in that final week. We look forward to the day uh, in which we actually experience lament and confession of sin on Good Friday, which leads us to Easter Sunday. And through it all, through today, whether we're singing Hosanna, whether we're singing He's Worthy, whether on Good Friday we're looking at the cross and laying down our sins on Him once again, or on on Easter Sunday, whether we're celebrating the resurrection, in all of these things, we're saying, Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy of our worship. And so we want to invite you to stand as we head into Holy Week this week and to sing of the worth of Jesus. Would you stand and sing together? Oh,
exalted, the King is exalted on high, and I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise give the sending prayer, I just want to invite, if you want to stay around a little bit and fellowship, kind of uh, see, talk to those around you, we invite you to stay here in the, in the sanctuary, it has more room, uh, it can spread out, uh, or go outside, one of those two options, we would encourage you to do that. Next week is Easter, hallelujah, we're looking forward to that, and we're looking forward to celebrating together. Let's receive the sending prayer this morning. May the God of peace, who the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in his peace. Thank you.